Hey, it's Brittany, and I am joined today by my friend Coop. We are talking all things CAIC, avalanche danger, and staying safe out there. How are we doing today, Coop? I'm doing great. It's awesome to be with you. Yeah, I love having you and having your company. And so let's go ahead and jump straight into all things avalanche. What do you got for me today? Sure. So going into the weekend here, we're at a moderate avalanche danger across a large portion of Colorado. Um, and really wind slabs are what's driving the avalanche danger. So um, it's pretty windy Thursday, Friday, and parts of Saturday. Um, and the winds are going to drift snow at upper elevations. Most of these avalanches will be relatively small. They'll be in the new snow, um, but they may be big enough to knock you down and send you for a dangerous ride. So be pretty careful on easterly facing slopes and really any slopes from kind of the north facing part of the compass through southeast. Those are some things to definitely be aware of. And as we were talking about avalanche danger and such, can you kind of tell me some of those areas that we should be kind of worried about moving into this end of this week into this weekend? Sure. Yeah. So some of the most dangerous places in the areas that we're seeing biggest avalanches are in the really shallow snowpack areas. So places in the middle of the mountains that just didn't get as much snow um, this winter. So those places are areas kind of south and east of Aspen, the east side of the Sawatch Range, um, the Mosquito Range. So areas south of Breckenridge and south of I-70 out into the Front Range. And in those places, we've been seeing some quite big avalanches. So the snowpack is pretty thin in there. It's easy to affect the deeper buried weak layers along the ground. So be especially careful on westerly facing slopes that have been stripped by the wind. So again, they're more shallow. The weak layers are closer to the surface. Um, and then in, in all those areas, if you find less than about two feet of snow, be especially careful. And Coop, I wanted to ask this question to you. When we talk about snowpack, can you go into a little bit of a detail of what that may look like when you describe a snowpack? Sure, yeah. So right now we're in this transition period, right? So we're still in the winter in a lot of places. We still have a cold snowpack, um, but we're transitioning more and more into this springtime snowpack. So the sun's getting higher in the sky. Um, temperatures are warming. It only takes really an hour of direct sunlight um, to start to wet the top of the snowpack. So the snowpacks really split um, across the state. So the Western areas um, that get the snow uh, much earlier, right? They're the first mountains that see the snow are much deeper. The snowpack is much more stable. The more central areas um, that don't, don't see quite as much snow, right? It's blocked by the mountains on both sides, mm -hmm. have a more shallow snowpack. Shallow snowpacks are weaker snowpacks um, and that's really what causes problems. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I do have one last question for you. Do you have any personal tips and tricks that you would like to share with anyone that might find themselves kind of close to that avalanche danger and what they should do to kind of get out of that safely? Yeah, the most important things right now are to avoid these wind drifted areas and avoid these shallow slopes. Make sure you're traveling with a partner. Make sure you have the proper equipment and uh, go out and have a fun time. Absolutely. And can you tell us where we can get those live updates so that we can stay in the know of where to go and what's a safe place to be? Yeah, so we put out avalanche forecasts every day in the afternoon. Check colorado.gov slash avalanche. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Coop, for keeping us in the know and keeping us safe. So appreciate your time today. It's great to be with you. Have a good weekend.